You're listening to Boomers Today with your host, Frank Sampson. Well, welcome to Boomers Today. I'm your host, Frank Sampson. Of course, each week we bring you important, useful information on issues facing baby boomers, which I'm one of, you know, certainly their parents, other loved ones. And I just want to thank everybody uh, for all your support. So many of you uh, listen to our show via our free app, uh, which uh, appears on, uh, on uh, you could get that on your Android phone or on your uh, iPhone. Uh, many of you go to uh, I, iTunes, uh, which is now, I guess, uh, the podcast version, version is uh, Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, or you could go certainly directory, uh, direct to our website at, uh, uh, at boomerstodayradio.com. You can get to us that way as well. So uh, thank you uh, for sharing uh, with others and other family members, and that's why we've been able to continue to bring you such wonderful guests, and we have another wonderful guest with us today. Uh, we have with us Brad Brewer. Brad is the Vice President of Legacy Kept, a social enterprise dedicated to preserving family stories and bridging the generation gap. After serving for over 15 years as a leader in small business startups and higher education community engagement, Brad is now on a mission to honor older adults in America and strengthen family relationships. Brad, thank you so much for joining us on Boomers today. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's great to be with you, Frank. Yeah, great to have you. I think, you know, what you're doing is just fantastic, and I'm excited to learn more here. So, you know what I'd like to, maybe we could just start out telling us uh, kind of what was your incentive or what was what made you think of Legacy Kept, uh, and tell us just a little bit more about what you do. That'd be great. Great way to start. Thank you. Well, it is a, a family uh, social enterprise uh, startup that's uh, been going for a few months now. But we we just heard too many stories of people who had lost their family history or didn't know their family history, and um, who would say, "Oh man, I wish I had something in writing from my." mother or my grandmother or my grandfather, um, we would have her thoughts or her, uh, her, our stories. And so Legacy Cap is a website that was designed by my father-in-law, who's a computer programmer. It's very handy to have in the family. That's great. And it, uh, and it makes it simple for anyone to answer interview questions about their life. Um, and then we'll publish their finished project as hardcover books they can give to their kids, their grandkids that would be cherished for generations to come. That's fantastic. So did you have a desire? I mean, what did you, is this something you want to do for somebody in your family or you just saw uh, people surrounding you that wanted something like this? Yeah, no, it's actually really close to home um, in a, in an interesting way. My grandfather wrote a book about his life and our family uh, before he passed away in the late 90s. Uh, He died of cancer in in 99, but but just two years prior, he finished his own uh, autobiography, which he had worked on for years, uh, just kind of typing away on it. And he made copies for his kids and grandkids that that actually has meant the world to me to have this book. Um, It's um, it's helped me understand where I come from and and so many important things. And it actually caused my wife and I to move to Florida where I grew up visiting him. Uh, and so that's pretty special. Um, but conversely, my wife's grandfather passed away a few years ago, and they just sort of lamented that they did not have anything in writing from him. They didn't have any of his stories and knew he, he had lived a really kind of a troubled life. And and they just wished they knew more about them, and they had lost that chance. And so, you know, we came together on this, and, and Heidi, my wife, and her dad um, really started the project. And then when I came around and said, hey, look, I got this great book that my grandfather wrote. What if we made this? We all just kind of wanted to make it simple um, for other people to do this. 
So would you say that um, that it usually starts with the actual, let's say, older adult that uh, says, hey, I want to I want to do this and I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to give it as a gift to my kids and grandkids, etc. Uh, or is it usually the adult children that go to mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whatever and say, hey, would you like doing this? You know, we'd love for you to do this. Would you do this? I mean, what, does it work both ways? It does work both ways. And it's been so interesting to have conversations with, you know, kind of both sides. Probably the majority of our early sales and, and strongest interest have, has been from the children or grandchildren who say, I absolutely want this um, from my mom or dad or from my grandmother, and so I'm going to buy this for them and ask them for their story. Um, and I think that's almost been needed in certain cases because there's a resistance sometimes from the older adults who might say, well, what have I done that's worth writing a book about or, you know, what – um, I'm not a writer, and, and, and so there's a humility there, and, and, and sometimes, honestly, maybe a little insecurity there about it, um, And so, but but we do certainly have older adults who have said, man, I, I've always wanted to write a, a memoir or an autobiography, but it's just overwhelming um, to think of starting from scratch, so if I just had this you know simple model where I could plug in my answers to these questions and, and have it, that'd be great, so we, so, we, we do get both. So what do you, so that first scenario that you said, that you have that older adult that maybe gives a little pushback because like, hey, what do I have to write about? And I'm not a writer and I don't want to do this. What's your response to somebody like that? Well, I've, I've had fun actually having these conversations and I confess my own dad resisted and it's like our business, you know? Um, but I said, <laughs> uh, I said, dad, I need your story. And, and you do have a lot to say and you have lived an amazing life. Um, and, and, and so we had some conversations where it ended up being really special in our relationship because he felt honored that I wanted to know his story. Um, and, and that kind of pushed him, I think, over the top to, to agree to do it. Uh, but ever since then, whenever we have phone calls about something maybe he's thinking about writing or uh, getting into it, 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 it starts flowing. I mean, you all it takes is, hey, what's one of your favorite road trip stories from when you were younger? Or, you know, what was the growing up in the Vietnam War era like for you? And and then it really starts. So people just kind of need sometimes that that pushback. So when they when they resist, I I really give it to them. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, we need your. So whatever information, and we'll talk about the process in a minute. But uh, whatever information that that older adult is writing is. Is there somebody on your team or a family member that's kind of taking that and maybe, I, I hate to say edit because you don't want to make changes to what they're saying, but or are, you, or are you taking the information as is or, or are you, you making any changes or additions if maybe the person isn't such a great writer? Right now, it's it's whatever someone puts in, and they're getting, often folks are getting help from family members, which is a really cool aspect of this, um, is that so they'll get someone else to, to proofread it. Uh, we're a pretty small team right now, and, and we wanted to make this scalable so that, you know, anyone can do it. And we just, you know, we wouldn't have the time to, to edit um, everybody's work. But so right. by prompting them to really make sure they review it and, and have you know, a family member or a friend review it. Um, it's it's set up so that it's really simple to just input output uh, becomes your ebook, or you can print those uh, those hardcover books. Great. So I know we're doing this via audio. It'll probably be a lot easier, and you know, people could go to your website, which will certainly give you the opportunity to share with everybody. But can you try to explain kind of the you know somebody says, all right, we're going to do this. Take us through the process. How does it work? Sure. Well, it's amazing when, when I get people talking about how valuable this is um, and they, they tell me how man, these stories are one of a kind and man, to have this would be so important. And then I tell them how much it costs, their jaws drop. Um, they think it's going to cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have a custom book printed or do this project. 
we wanted to make it totally affordable for people. Um, so an account, your own personal account where you write all your, your story is just $50. Wow. Um, and wow. So, yeah. So you get on there for 50 bucks and that includes the finished ebook. Um, if you just want to share that digitally, but obviously we, you know, we want people to print hardcover books as well, which they'll be, they'll be really proud of. Um, and those are $50 each as well. So, pretty, you know, doable, we think. And uh, so if your son or grandson buys this for you and says, hey, I bought you a legacy kept account, uh, it's as simple as uh, putting in your email address and just some very basic information. Uh, you give your book a title. Uh, so you make it your own, uh, your own legacy title. And then when you log into your account, uh, we, we understood that, you know, a lot of the folks that are going to be working on this um, maybe a little resistant to, to certain technology or have some concerns about things. So we made it very, very user-friendly uh, and simple. So you get on the site, and, and what you would see is five different categories. Um, one is called, the first one's called early life, and then it's adulthood, and then you have relationships, career, and so on. And when you click on the category, the question prompts, up here, and you get to choose which question you want to answer. A little text box comes up, and it's as simple as typing in your answer or having uh, a partner do that for you while you uh, sort of dictate. And, yeah. and that's been done too. It's really fun. So what, that's what's, a simple problem. What's been your experience with people on average of how long it takes them to get it done from beginning to end? And, and do they do it over a longer span of time, or are they usually one sitting, boom, 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 it's done? <laughs> well, it's, we're actually right in the middle. Our, our legacy writers, as we call them, um, really started just in January. And okay. that's when we opened, that's when we opened the doors. And so everyone so far is still in process. And, um, and, uh, you know, we've gotten some feedback, uh, on how they're doing it. And some, it's just their own project, but they really are taking it seriously, which we love. And they're, you know, kind of making maybe a, a question a week or something like that is, is what they're trying to answer. Um, there's one grandson who calls his 92 year old grandmother every week with the new question and, and they talk on the phone and she answers it and he types in. Uh, That's, a That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Record yeah, so it. People, yeah. Great. Yeah. So people are getting creative with it. And, um, but you know, it can be done quicker. Uh, there are 30, uh, prompted questions and you can add more if you want more and you can edit and delete some if you don't like them, but 30. And so what sometimes we'll say is, look, if you, if you really want to do it quickly, answer one question a day, you'll be done in a month. Uh, you could answer more than that and be done in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you're really, uh, maybe time is a factor. And then we know some folks are, are dealing with end of life situations and hospice care. And if you just want the very basics um, and you want to take some time and, and just get some answers you can certainly use it for that as well yeah so i know the power of the written word is huge i mean i know my my mom who passed away many years ago but um you know if i come across anything of hers that she wrote number one in her own writing but also uh in you know in her own words i cherish yeah. that just cherish yeah. that so talk to us about the that written word compared to maybe other other programs out there. I know there's others out there that maybe legacy programs with photos and recordings and things like that. So can you help explain maybe the difference in, in your your thoughts about that? Yeah, thanks for asking that. Um, it is something we're really passionate about. Obviously, my own having my grandfather's book that I can just pull off the, the bookshelf and flip to my favorite stories and read them to my wife and uh, and then, God willing, read them to my son and grandson someday or have them pass it on. That's something that's special that you get with this book. Um, but, you know, there, it's fascinating to me that there is such a huge interest these days in our society in heritage. And so companies like Ancestry.com and the DNA um, sites and things like that, people want to know, where did I come from and, and what's the you know, what's this all about? But what they get, and I don't really want to take a fight with Ancestry, but what they often will get is some maybe some names and some dates and some locations. Um, but but what those things aren't giving is the, the rich context 
in their own words, like you said, um, that you can get when someone writes something down. And um, so I think there's a, a power there. And then I, I shared with my wife the other day, you know, if I had a video of my grandfather telling these stories that are in this book uh, at maybe the age of 78 before he passed, um, I would have a, a clear, you know, I'd listen to his voice and I'd see him and that would be really special. But one cool thing that happens, at least for me, when I read his story about growing up in the Great Depression and, and being excited to go out in World War II and be a fighter pilot, is I picture the, a young man when I'm reading that story. And I, and I picture when he's kind of, you know, pursuing my grandmother before they started dating in their, you know, in the 1940s. And, and I can see them as young people, which, you know, uh, it's not a huge, huge, you know, thing, but I just think it, it's a little something that, that helps when you have the written word as opposed to watching maybe a, you know, a senior that's, that's really that's kind of great. describing. That's great. That's great. So, Brad, we're going to just take a real, real quick break here. Just uh, want to recognize our sponsor, and then we're going to come back and people learn more how to uh, get get to your site and uh, got a couple more questions for you. So uh, I want to remind everybody that today's show is sponsored by Senior Care Authority, an elder care consulting organization that has a national network of professionally trained and experienced local advisors to assist families in determining the right path for your loved ones. They'll discuss various long-term care options, whether it's in-home care, assisted living, memory care, or if you just need an advocate to get some advice from. A local senior care authority advisor can help you now. So for a free initial uh, consultation with an advisor in your area, contact Senior Care Authority at 888 809-1231 809-1231 or you could go directly to the website at www.seniorcareauthority.com and you could find a local advisor right in your area. So we're back with uh, Brad Brewer who is the uh, Vice President of Legacy Kept and um, uh, some great information Brad um, you know, maybe so we don't run out of time and we're not hurrying this. Why don't you share with people how they could uh, uh, learn more about Legacy Kept, your, you know, whatever information you'd like to share with people on how they could reach you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so the website is just LegacyKept.com. That's LegacyKept.com. And from the site, you'll be able to buy accounts as gifts. You can pre-purchase the books that you want to buy. Uh, you can get a watch a short video of the inside of the website so you kind of see how it looks before you buy um, on the How It Works page. And we even had a little video made uh, with my own story, uh, having my grandfather's book and what that meant to me too. So if, if any of the uh, older parents need a, need a little nudge, um, you can show them that video too. But so LegacyCap.com. Great, great. So I got a question, you know, in our computer age now, you know, there's just so little of paper. Everything's kept on your computer and backed up and all of that. So somebody that, uh, you know, utilizes Legacy Kept and has this wonderful book, and then something happens to that book, whatever, you know, was lost, damaged, something happened. What's the backup plan? Is there a backup plan? Absolutely. It's We've been saying uh, this is sort of timeless meets tech. And the tech part is that you get to put your story in a very secure, encrypted, and, and personal uh, website uh, where it's going to be kept safe. And you can share it with your family and friends digitally, if you'd like, through the ebook version, um, something that you could read on a Kindle or on a, an iPad. Um, and so it'll, it'll be set, kept secure for you there. You can even edit it later, add more to it, change things around. Uh, but when you're ready to publish the hardcover books, um, that that can be done at any time, and it can be done again and again. So, you know, I've heard of some of these products where you can buy it maybe at, at a store, and it's, it's a book that says, hey, tell me your story, and, and there are like 100 questions in there. And I was just talking to my best friend's mom the other day, and she said, oh, I have two of those on my bookshelf, and I never do it. Um, and she said, why are you different? And I said, well, 
Mama G, if you answered all those questions, number one, there'd probably be a lot of like lines through things and you would have forgotten the thing you wanted to add, but you wouldn't be able to because it's in, in print. Uh, but then like when you're done, you'd only have the one copy. And so if you wanted to make another one, you'd have to write it all over again. So the beauty of Timeless Meets Tech is you get this beautiful printed hardcover book that's really easy to read, um, but it's also kept secure um, online, and, and you can update it, you can add to it, and reprint it if you want. That's great. So is there, you know, one thing that um, I was also thinking about is age. You know, I mean, what, what, at what point, is there a right point to start to write that, you know, memoir, um, because, you know, maybe somebody, let's just say somebody could be in their 60s, all right? And the kids and the grandkids, you know, want grandpa to start doing that. You know, they might still have another good, you know, who knows, 20 to 30 years or more left. So yeah. do they wait? Do they start? What do they do? <laughs> I love this. Uh, so I'd say if you're really at a place where you you are reflecting on on your life and your legacy and the things that you want to share with your your family, um, then then do it. And then you know I hope you do live another twenty and thirty years. And I hope that the process of writing, which we you know there's a lot of great research that supports this, the process of writing and reflecting on your life will actually enliven you and embolden you for the next chapter. Uh, and how you want to spend your days and how you want to have re your relationship strengthened. Um, so, yeah, go ahead, write it, and then keep living. And if you, you know, end up taking this world trip that you've always wanted to because you, you got inspired, write about that. Add it to your, your book, and, and, you know, you can print another one or <laughs> share the, the updated version. Um, but, true. you know, I'm working on a book. I'm actually working on a book right now, and, and I'm just about to be 40, and so hopefully I have plenty of uh, next chapters to yeah, add to all, mine. Yeah, you got a long way to go. Yeah, a long way to go. That's <laughs> great. So, you know, I don't expect you to share any names here, but are there any, you know, stories that you could think of of people that utilize Legacy Kept and, and just kind of stand out in your mind, just some great stories that really uh, had a, uh, such a positive effect on families? Well, I, I always, there are two that come to mind. Uh, the first, I, I mentioned that we have a, a grandson who calls his 92-year-old grandmother every week. And, um, you know, somebody who was was born uh, and lived through, even as a young person, lived through the Great Depression and World War II. And then, you know, you think about the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War. Like, this is, uh, there's an African proverb that says, when an old person dies, a library is lost. And um, mm -hmm. so what this grand, what this grandson has has done is he's called me and he said, Brad, I just want to thank you because the conversations I'm having with my grandmother are just so beautiful. And I never would have had them if I didn't have this project as sort of the, the prompt to pick up the phone and ask her these, these questions. You know, people are calling uh, their family members, especially now, you know, right in the midst of what's happening with COVID and um, in particular isolation that's happening. Right. What about a better, what about a better conversation where you can ask, um, these, these really beautiful questions and get, get heartfelt information. And the grandmother said she feels like a celebrity that her grandson keeps asking her, you know, that he wants to interview her. Um, that's great. And then there's someone in our own community. Um, they're, they're very influential and have, have really been exemplary citizens and, and, and done a lot for people in our community. And, and I got to sit with, with her, uh, her name's Mary. And I sat with her for a little while. Um, and, and we just had a beautiful conversation about why she's doing this, why she's taking her time with it. Um, and so I just think, man, there's so much good, uh, that can come from, the process even of writing these legacies for the families themselves and, and the, the relationships and conversations that can be had. Yeah. So uh, those are great stories. I, so as you know, I'm in the senior care business industry and yeah. um, we quite often are dealing with uh, loved ones who maybe are suffering from some cognitive 
challenges, could be some form of dementia, could be Alzheimer's, uh, etc. And sometimes maybe, you know, it, have you had situations where a family wants to move forward uh, and somebody that is having some memory issues, which are usually short-term versus long-term, but maybe you could talk about that, uh, that it's not too late. I, I would think it's not too late to do this, right? But maybe you could talk absolutely. about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and it is, it's a tough topic, but it's so um, common and it's so real for, for a lot of us. And, and so we have, um, I, I, you know, we're relatively new um, getting our start, but we have already um, developed a partnership with our local Alzheimer's um, foundation uh, here in, in Florida, and, and they are going to use Legacy Kept um, as an activity, um, as a reminiscence therapy project, which, uh, you know, reminiscence therapy is essentially this idea that, that it supports uh, mental health um, and, and kind of can help even um, with folks that are dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, so they'll, you know, have a, a group of friends, uh, folks that are, that are hanging out, and they'll ask the question and get them thinking. And what I've been hearing is that um, certainly with early onset um, that the older stories, the longer term memory does tend to last longer than, than sometimes the short term. And so it really helps people to be able to tell, to think back and tell those, those old stories and why not capture them while they're able to tell them and preserve them for future generations. Yeah. Brad Brewer, LegacyCap.com. Check it out. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. Best of luck with your uh, with your organization and uh, thank you so much for joining us on Boomers today, Brad. Oh, it was a pleasure, Frank. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, and I want to thank everybody out there for joining us today on Boomers Today. Please, please be safe and we'll talk to everybody real soon. You've been listening to Boomers Today with Frank Sampson. To learn more about today's show, visit boomerstodayradio.com. And join us next time for another edition of Boomers Today.